a first line. I have to have a first line. It has to be one that captures me. And then I, I get lost in stories and I have to stop for a couple of days and, and go back and figure it out and, and start again. And like I said, I was never a reviser. I tended to be fairly lazy in college. And it was with Forest of Hands and Teeth was the first book that I was like, I want to give this the best shot I can, so I'm going to revise. And that meant rewriting scenes and tearing it apart and putting it back together again. So um, I have that first line that those have never changed in any of my books. But then beyond that, it, I get lost. I, my fiancé and I had been talking about the zombie world, and I had never planned on writing in it because it just wasn't, it just wasn't who I thought I was as a writer. And then I was looking for something for National Novel Writing Month. And my fiance said, write what you love. And I said, the zombie apocalypse as a joke. And he said, oh, yeah, you know, there you go. I didn't think it would get published. I didn't, I didn't think it was really anything at all except a book that I wrote 2,000 words a day. And JP would come home from work and I'd read them to him. And I finished it more for him and us to share than anything else. I found a diff much different voice. And it was a voice that I had used... Um, I had found in college and sort of had forgotten about. And so when I, when I had that first line and I was just experimenting, I, I tr pulled out this voice I had found in college and, you know, I don't know why I hadn't thought about it earlier. I think it was just, I felt so much, I paid so much attention to the market and I wanted to write something I could sell. And so for the first time I was truly writing something that I just really loved to write. And it wasn't about the, sa the sale, it was about the writing. Uh, and, and I think, you know, I think that made a difference to a certain extent. 2006, they were not the thing. Huh? No, and not only that, like, I, I was so sure that mine was going to be the query letter all the agents took to their, you know, agent happy hour and laughed about that, uh, that I queried out of, out of the bunch. I had one agent who I knew had sold a zombie book to uh, Mark Henry's book, and so I queried him knowing of all of them he wouldn't laugh at the and that's who I signed with I, I it's a good question I hated scary movies and then I, I, I mean I despised them because when I was a child my babysitter had me watch poltergeist and she said I would love it because because I my name was Caroline and I had long blonde hair I was just like the main character and so I hated all scary movies and second year of law school my fiance said let's go see Dawn of the Dead and I said no and he said this is Durham North Carolina what else are we gonna do and I said okay and I left just with this feeling of what do you do? And it's not just the zombies, it's just everything you know in the world has irrevocably changed. And I think, I think it, that same fascination is somewhat the same with nuclear war in that in the wasteland, the nuclear wasteland, there is no recovery, no quick recovery. But if you can go outside of that wasteland, you know, you can still eke out some sort of a living. But with the zombies, I mean, it, it hits every corner of the world. Um, and it can be death, it can be nihilism, it can be or nihilism. Um, you know, for me, it's, it's existence. Like, the zombies, all they do is they exist. And, and especially writing for teens, there's a lot of teen, you know, going through your teens when you have to figure out what beyond existence are you going to be. I learned that, um, that I, can, I can do it. Um, I remember, you know, I... For me, I've learned that there's always a spot in the drafting where, for me personally, all hope is lost. Like, this sounds terrible, and, and I, think, I think writers, we often have a hard time sort of admitting these weaknesses we want to show to the world, like, oh, look, it's easy and there's a beautiful book. But, you know, there were nights when I would, you know, find myself on the back porch crying <clears throat> because I didn't think I was going to be able to make it. Like, I created this huge tangle of characters and emotions and, and plot lines, and I didn't see how it was going to work. And so when that moment hit in the dark and hollow places, I was just, you know, there was this tiny little thread I could hang on to, which was, you made it work in forest, you made it work in the dead tossed waves, like, you, you can do it again. And you, you don't want to believe yourself, but at the same time, like, that's all you can hold on to. My advice would be to write. I mean, I, I know that sounds really simplistic and basic, but I think in the writing world now there are so many distractions. There's blogging and, and online groups and chat and Skype and all of these things that, that take us away from writing. And I think at the end of the day, you have to write. Um, I also think you have to be kind to yourself because some days you, you just the writing's not there. 
And I know I felt guilty many of times for not writing enough. And, and you know, you face enough rejection and enough criticism that you need to be kind to yourself and say, it's okay maybe if I don't write today, so long as today doesn't turn into tomorrow in the week. You know, you find, you, you make it a priority, but you understand when it can't be the top priority. Um, I gave up cooking, I gave up cleaning, which really wasn't hard to give up. Um, we gave up, you know, TV because writing was gonna be my priority. And I had the support of my fiance who was also writing that we both made it our priority. And, and you know, at the end of the day, maybe the laundry just was clean, but it was on the couch and it wasn't folded. But, you know, sometimes you don't really care if the t-shirt's folded if you can get another 200 words in. Mm -hmm.